story is called When the World Screams. The first nightmares occurred on November 21st, 2012. They called it the night the world screamed. Billions of people awoke in fear. Old and young, rich and poor, sick and healthy, all felt the same. For maybe the first time in all of human history, man shared a connection with one another. We all felt like children again, desperately wishing the boogeyman wasn't under our beds, or in the closet, or wherever else such a beast could dwell. For each of us, the nightmare was different, but all shared a similar theme. Man against his fellow man. Our prejudices and bigotries were exploited by our subconsciousness. Rich whites dreamt of poor blacks breaking into their homes, beating and raping their families. Poor blacks dreamt of white cops busting down their doors, beating and raping their families. Baby boomers dreamt of Russian bombs ripping America apart. Russians of the same generation saw their country destroyed in a similar fashion. Jews had nightmares where their countries herded them into trains to be slaughtered. Muslims saw themselves thrown into cells and tortured. Whatever fear each individual had of his fellow man became his personal hell. Even people who claimed to never have a dream that night had one. It's sad to think that rather than the boundless beauty and potential that dreams hold, some will only know the torment and hell of the nightmare. Of course, the world didn't change right away. People went about their daily routines as if nothing happened. After all, it's just a nightmare. That's what we told ourselves. That's what we believed. And hope was the truth. At the end of the day, the sun went down and the moon came up. Just as, it, just as it were every day before November 21st, 2012. The world lay down in their beds and closed their eyes. Tranquil sleep came to the people of Earth quickly, but did not last long. The second night was worse than the first. The screams of man shook the Earth. The nightmares came again, but increased in their intensity. The visions to which, to which each man, woman, and child of this world were subjected were the same as the night before, but more vivid, but more vivid and violent. During the prior night, many awoke before the true nightmare began. The second night was different. All were trapped, forced to witness the full extent of their worst fears made reality. No one was spared. Children ran to their mothers only to find them cowering in the dark corners of their homes. The world laid in their beds, praying they were awake, and that the sun would somehow move faster and fill the darkness with light. The sun did rise and was on time as always. The world began its day. This is when things began to change. People felt the need to share their experiences from the past two nights with one another. They were compelled to. By midday, people found that everyone they confronted had experienced a nightmare the past two nights. Mostly, everyone put it off to coincidence. After all, they were just nightmares. The third night came. The world lay down in bed, but sleep did not come easily. As soon as our consciousness dipped to that level that is sleep, the nightmare began again. For each of us, the same as before, except, as with the prior night, another increase in intensity, as well now, perspective. For not only did we experience the torment of watching our families and friends tortured, maimed, raped, burned, sodomized, and served up to whatever other horror they deep in what was once an amazing gift we called dreams, but we also became our families and friends all at once. We experienced all the pain and suffering that personas experience. Again, the world screams. The seeds to our destruction were planted after the third night. Throughout the world, people agreed there was no coincidence to what was transpiring when we closed our eyes for our nightly rest. News reports came from every corner of Earth, all saying the same thing. Gone were the days when dreams were all an open playing field. Dreams were one thing and one thing only. A never-changing, personalized nightmare based on our own ignorance and fears. Of course, there were still some who scoffed at any relevance the nightmares could hold. There were even some who attempted to fight it, lucid dreamers, yogis, and such. In the end, all fell to the fear. People continued to share their nocturnal experiences with each other and found solace in others with similar fears. This false sense of camaraderie was our path to destruction. The fourth night came and went in the same manner as the prior three. The inhabitants of Earth experienced their hellish nightmares and, as before, with increased vividness and intensity. By the end of the first week, lines were being drawn. Where racism and bigotry were once thought to be wiped out, they returned with vigor. People slowed down. The average person could only bear a few hours sleep a night. The world became grumpy. Businesses suffered, and shortly after, the world economy collapsed. People banded together with others who shared their fears. Fanatical religious groups convincingly secured their flocks, while scientists worked feverishly trying to find a source for what ailed their minds. A group called the LDU, Lucid Dreamers United, announced their theory on television two days before all broadcasts ceased. They claimed our minds were being influenced by some outside source whose origin was unknown. But if they had to guess, it was probably alien or interdimensional. Scientists disagreed with this, mainly on the principle that it could not be proven, and if true, could not be stopped. 
Some of the scientific community believe the source of our current global crisis was evolution. Our reactive mind, as L. Ron Hubbard called it, was fighting back after centuries upon centuries of neglect. We had been living without predators for so long our minds were forcing us to see them where they didn't exist, like the phantom limb syndrome. Yeah. Other scientists suggested global warming as a cause, stating that perhaps with the melting of certain glaciers, gases had been released into our atmosphere, which had then caused the night terrors. This latter theory was easily disproved with a few simple tests. The air we breathed was the same as it had always been. Because science could not provide answers, pseudoscience grew. People looked to New Age healers and con artists for help. The fighting began in the third week. Trade routes were virtually all shut down and people moved about like nomads. New communities formed out of like nightmare people. Starvation took hold in many parts of the world. Suicide cults cluttered the streets with their massive, earthly exits. The world was no longer grumpy. It was tired, angry, and paranoid. The religious fanatics started the fires that in a few short days would sweep the globe and cover the planet in the darkness. Each group, like a small militia, fought the others for fear their nightmares would come true. The military powers that still existed held their fingers over the bombs, but oddly enough, none could recall the necessary codes to launch them. On December 21, 2012, I stand alone at the bottom of a large mountain. The smell of burning cities circles me. Their dreams have devoured them, yet mine are the ones that they should have really feared. My eyes are fixed on a small opening at the base of the mountain. The darkness of the hole calls to me. A small, gray hand juts out of the black void. It grabs the side of the mountain and pulls. Another gray hand makes its way out of the hole. Its fingers are long, with sharp, pointy nails. The creature squirms and pulls its body out of the mountain. It is bald and naked, with eyes blinking at the sun. The dearos are here, and my nightmare has begun.